Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sarazzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session, guys, we're going to be talking about kinetic energy and using the formula E is equal to a half mv squared. Right, and before we get going, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to keep my channel going and keep my content as free as possible. Okay, so let's get straight into it. Okay, so the main thing is going to be this. Anything which is moving has kinetic energy. So therefore that means that if there's a person running, let's say you are running guys, or there's a car which is moving, both of them actually have kinetic energy. So anything moving has kinetic energy. And the word kinetic comes from the Greek word kinesis, which simply means motion guys. So anything which is moving has kinetic energy. Okay, now from here, we're going to discuss the factors which affect the kinetic energy of a moving object. So what are the factors which are affecting the kinetic energy of a moving object? Okay, so here we are, guys. Factors affecting the kinetic energy. So let's say I've got two cars right now. Let's say they are both the same mass. So this is our first scenario at the top. Uh, the mass of the first one is 10 kilograms, and the mass of the second one is also 10 kilograms. But look, this one is moving faster. Which one do you think has the greatest kinetic energy? Well, hopefully you can identify that it will be this one over here. So clearly we know that the kinetic energy increases if the velocity increases. So if the velocity is higher, therefore the kinetic energy is higher. And what about this scenario at the bottom? So look, in the second scenario, uh, they're traveling at the same speed. Look, 5 meters per second and 5 meters per second. But look, this one has a greater amount of mass. So which one's going to have the greater amount of energy? Which one do you think it is? The one with the lower mass or the higher mass? Hopefully you can identify that the one with the greater mass has the highest kinetic energy. And here we are, look on the right hand side, I'll put two statements. As the velocity increases, therefore the kinetic energy of the object increases. And as the mass increases, the kinetic energy also increases here. So two factors which affect the kinetic energy of an object. Okay, so from here, what is the formula to calculate the kinetic energy of an object? Right, in order to calculate the kinetic energy of an object, we can use the following formula. The kinetic energy is equal to a half times by the mass times by the velocity squared. So let's put it down in symbols, so obviously these are in words. Kinetic energy, we're going to say it's going to be E. You might find that some people put a little K at the bottom to mean a kinetic energy, so EK if you want. You can keep it as E if you want to. That will be equal to a half times by the mass times by the velocity squared. Yes, M stands for mass, V stands for the velocity over here, and obviously don't forget to square it. Now, uh, for every equation we need to know the units, so energy is measured in joules, mass is measured in kilograms, and velocity is measured in meters per second over here. So make sure we are happy with the units as well. Obviously the half does not have the units. Okay, so let's put it into practice guys and try and use it to tackle a question. Right, here we go. What is the kinetic energy of a 1,000 kilogram car traveling at 5 meters per second? Right, let's write down the formula. The energy is equal to a half times by the mass times by the velocity squared. And let's identify what you've been given. We've got the mass over here and we've got the velocity over here. So therefore, let's go E is equal to a half times by a 1,000. And don't forget the mass is in kilograms. You don't need to convert it. So a half times by a 1,000 times by the velocity. 5 squared guys and we can work that out and let's do this and my answer is going to be 12500 joules guys here we go yes 12500 joules and that's easy stuff make sure you're happy to do that and use the formula yourself let's try one more example right a car of mass 1200 kilograms traveling at a steady speed has a kinetic energy of 175 kilojoules what is the speed of the car Right, let's write down the equation. So we know that E is equal to a half times by the mass times by the velocity squared. Right, we want to work out the speed. So basically that's going to be trying to work out what the V is. Yes, so yes, sometimes they might interchange speed and velocity, but it's the same thing here. Let's rearrange this formula to make V the subject. So we're going to rearrange it so that it becomes E and I'm going to take the half M underneath. So divided by half m, yes, a bit of algebra, is equal to v squared. And therefore, v is equal to the square root of e divided by a half m. There we go. Um, if you don't like that expression, because some kids say, oh, you can't have the half at the bottom of the fraction, you can flip it, it comes to the top. So it's equal to the square root of 2e divided by m. Yes, I rearranged it. Both those formulas are the same. Now let's plug it in. So we know that so using this formula, V is equal to the square root of, let's do this, the energy. Right, this energy is in kilo, you must convert it. So 175 kilojoules is the same as, you times it by a thousand, get rid of the kilo, 
175000 joules into here. So it's 175000 joules divided by, oh, we're going to times it by 2 times by 2. So 2 times by all of that. So we're using this one over here. 2 times by E divided by the value of M1200. And into a calculator, obviously we square root the whole thing. Okay, so this works out to be the root of 291.67, which is going to be equal to 17.1 meters per second, everyone. So this answer is going to be 17.1 meters per second. Fantastic stuff. Okay, so there's one more thing to discuss when we're talking about kinetic energy. It's the following. Okay, so which has a bigger impact on kinetic energy? Double the mass or doubling the velocity? So which one has a bigger impact on the kinetic energy? Is it doubling the mass or doubling the velocity? Okay, so the way we're going to tackle this problem, and it's a bit tricky, is by obviously looking at the formula and doing some calculations. Okay, right, in order to answer this question, we're going to do a couple of calculations. And I've drawn two grids on here to help us. You can see that we've got velocity and mass and energy. So in the first scenario, we're going to keep the velocity constant, but double the mass, and we're going to see what happens to the energy. But in the other one, we're going to keep the mass constant and double the velocity, and we're going to calculate the energy. Okay, so you can do this yourself. You can work out the kinetic energy in all of these guys, and then we can compare the results. So let's do it. Okay, so hopefully you've got the same answers as me right now. So I've worked out the kinetic energy in all cases. Hopefully you can see the following, that if you were to keep the velocity constant and double the mass, so look, we're doubling the mass here, we can see we've got double the amount of kinetic energy. Okay. But then look on this side over here, if you keep the mass constant, but you double the velocity, look what's actually happened to the kinetic energy. How much have you got more? Well, look, this one is four times the original amount. So look, you've got four times the original amount here compared to the previous one, which is only twice. So which one actually has the bigger impact on kinetic energy? Is it doubling the mass or doubling the velocity? Hopefully you can see that when you double the velocity, it makes a bigger impact on the kinetic energy compared to doubling the mass over here. There we go. And that's it for another session of Surrounds with Dazzle Physics. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to keep my channel going and good luck in your studies. Ciao, ciao and goodbye.